Most of the prophets in the Old Testament speak of the day of the Lord. Here's an example from the book of Joel, chapter 1 and verse 15. Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Now, as we study the whole Bible, what we realize is that many times these prophets were talking about something that had a fulfillment in their day and also applied to the future day of the Lord that you and I know to be the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. But they all prophesy along the same lines that the day of the Lord is a day of judgment. It is a day of wrath. It is a day of darkness. And so, you know, I I know a lot of people that when I or some other preacher talk about these things, they don't want to hear it. They they say, I I don't want to think about those things. I don't want to think about darkness and judgment and, and the wrath of God. But it's part of the Bible. And it's important that you and I understand that that day is coming. And it is, like it says here in Joel, a day of destruction. If we return to 2 Peter, he talks about the day of the Lord as well. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. This is something yet future. This is something that is going to happen. And we know it's going to happen because God says it's going to happen. The question is, is what should we do about it? Do we live in dread and fear because we know this day is coming? Or do we write it off like so many others saying in verse 4 of 2 Peter, he says, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. In other words, we doubt the word of God or we try to spiritualize it some way, come up with some metaphorical way of describing what that was talking about and put it in the past as well. Well, we dare not do that. We need to take God's word at his word and realize that every jot and every tittle will be fulfilled completely. So what do we do with the knowledge of the day of the Lord? Well, Peter tells us very plainly and He says in verse 11 of chapter 3 of 2 Peter, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Okay, so so everything's going to melt with fervent heat, he says. This is going to happen. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Well, there it is. If you and I realize that this day of the Lord is coming, it should affect our character. It should affect our lives. We should live differently knowing that God is going to return and that he's going to come at a time and bring judgment to this earth and to those who do not believe in him. He says, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. God wants it to transform our character. God also wants for us to look at our fellow man and realize that we're ambassadors for Christ here during this time. We don't know how much time we have left, but in the time that we have left, we need to live for him. We need to live a life of holiness. And we need to realize that these are the days of salvation. This is the age of grace. And we need to be a part of sharing that good news, that gospel message of Jesus with others, because we don't know how much time we have, but if they will hear the good news, believe in their hearts, they can be saved. So I just want to encourage you with those words today. God bless. Have a great day.